Hello everyone, Pop-Tart here. Welcome back to the RTM channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build our Avro RJ100 in 1.5 to 1 scale. The RJ100 is a 4 engine, high wing T-tail regional jet with a range of 1,800 nautical miles. The series was initially produced as the British Aerospace BAE-146 with the 100, 200, and 300 variants, and the 100 for its first flight in 1981. In 1992, the aircraft was further improved upon as the Avro RJ series, with the 146, 100, 200, and 300 becoming the new Avro RJ 70, 85, and 100, respectively. The RJ family was produced right up until 2001, but still sees some service today, primarily with CityJet. Major former operators include Swiss Airlines, Qantas Link, and Brussels Airlines, among others, of course. So, as for the aircraft itself, like I said, what we have in front of us here is the BAE-146-300, or the RJ-100. There really isn't much of a visual difference between the two families, apart from the somewhat modernized flight deck. The RJ was just re-engined to be more efficient, and neither of these pose a difference to the build at all. So you can use this aircraft as either the BAE or the RJ variant, whatever you prefer. Anyways, let's have a look around the aircraft. At the nose here, we have the pitot tubes, the forward entry door. As I said, this is a high-wing aircraft, interestingly enough. You really don't see a whole lot of passenger aircraft like this. So, here are the wing lights and the four Honeywell LF-507 engines. That is for the RJ family. The BAE-146-300 would use the Lycoming ALF-502, an earlier version of the 507. But again, this has no visual difference. Here are the flap track fairings and the uh, vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizers. We also have the aft entry door and the uh, aft service door here with the uh, cargo door down here. And of course the forward service door at the front. As for the landing gear, there really isn't a whole lot to it. We have the tiny little nose landing gear here. The main landing gear are much more substantial. These would fold into the underbelly of the fuselage here. You can see the support structure on the inside and the uh, gear doors out to the side with the wheel well in here. One last thing, interestingly enough, the RJ didn't actually have reverse thrust capabilities. It's compensated for this by using an air brake at the rear of the fuselage in addition to the spoilers. This would deploy out like so to increase drag. It's quite unique, and I will of course be showing you how to add that onto your aircraft at the end of the video, and if you'd like, in case you're building an RJ landing at an airport or something of the sort. Anyways, that's it for the exterior though. So, like all of our 1.5 to 1 scale aircraft, we of course have a full interior design. So, hopping in here, starting up at the flight deck. Uh, we really don't have a whole lot of room to work with, but we've done our best. The throttle quadrant here, instruments, and the MCP. This banner here kind of represents the uh, pilot and co-pilot seats. Since we, since we really only have one block of width, we can't really replicate the seats or the yokes well. So this is all we've got. Coming back here into the cabin, we have the forward galleys. As for the seating, this is the standard configuration we've put together. Seating would, of course, vary by airline, but for our blank aircraft, this is the color we like to use. On the real aircraft, the seating is actually 3-2 across, but we only have one block of uh, space on either side here. Finally, we have the aft galley at the back, and the uh, doors again. That's all for the interior, though. So, that's about it for our little mini showcase. Now, one thing you should keep in mind, as you've probably noticed by now, this build does make use of our custom AeroTeam texture pack for things such as 3D models and custom slab and stair colors. A download link to this pack for Minecraft 1.13 can be found in the description below if you don't have it already, but if you're stuck in the default texture pack or some other pack for whatever reason, I'll show you workarounds you can use for the default pack. This build will still work perfectly fine in default, but please keep in mind that it'll look much better with the AeroTeam pack. Now, with that all out of the way, let's start the tutorial. 
As you're figuring out where you want to put this aircraft, this build is 46 blocks long, 37 blocks wide, and 13 blocks tall, including the landing gear. So make sure you have enough room for that as you're planning this, planning out where you want this to go. And speaking of landing gear, I'll first show you how to build this aircraft without the landing gear in case you're building this in flight. And then I'll show you how to add on the extended landing gear if you're building this uh, on final approach or on the ground. And if you are building this on the ground, you'll want you'll be starting with one block gap between the ground and layer one. Make sure this is correct. You don't want to get all the way through the tutorial only to be left with a floating aircraft parked in your world. Anyways, with that, let's get started on layer one. All right. So before we start with layer one, uh, as I said, we are using the Aero Team pack. In this texture pack, the uh, white color palette for the fuselage is achieved with the white wool and purple stairs and slabs for the uh, layering. Uh, obviously, in default, uh, this will look absolutely atrocious. You don't want a half purple aircraft sitting around your world. So I would advise using uh, quartz as your color palette for uh, default. Again, though, I highly recommend using the Aero Team pack. It makes things so much nicer, especially with our vertical uh, half slabs and all of that. But with that all out of the way, let's get going on layer one here. So we have our uh, materials here. As I said, we'll be starting one block off the ground if you are building this on the ground. So starting with our uh, top slabs, come up here, place a top slab, actually two top slabs going back here with a one block gap in between that and the ground. Switch over to your solid block, place uh, three solid blocks going back here with uh, two top slabs on those last two there. Now grab your wool blocks and make a three by 15 square here going back. So uh, just 15 going back here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Box this off like so. Once this is all filled in here, we have some detailing on the underside with uh, airfoil extensions and all of that. So uh, hop down here, grab your stone buttons and levers. Where we have the uh, 15 long uh, row box here starting at the front. Uh, skip this first block here place a stone button right there on the second one, skip another block, stone button, and without skipping a block this time, a lever, and make sure this is flipped backwards like so. With that out of the way, now we have the uh, uh, landing gear uh, box in, in the center here. So for this, grab your birch trapdoor as well, uh, another texture pack note in the Aero Team pack. This is a uh, solid wool texture as well. So, uh, for this, place a birch trapdoor right under here. Uh, if you're using default, uh, an iron trapdoor would probably be best for shaping since it's the closest to a white color. But uh, in the Aero Team pack, again, this is a solid wool. So. We have your uh, birch trapdoor one block under here. Make this a three wide row next here. A second row of three and one right at the end here. This helps to round off the uh, underside a little bit. So now for the uh, rest of this, take your wool and just cover this whole thing across here right up until the uh, last trapdoor there. Grab your blocks of quartz, and where we have these two in the center here, place full blocks of quartz right there. These are the gear doors uh, covering up the landing gear. Off to either side, an upside down uh, wool stair facing outwards, just like this. Switch back to your blocks of wool, and coming back from the center three here, seven blocks back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And just box this off, like so. Grab your quartz stairs, and on the right side only, again, this is for the cargo door here, place a quartz uh, upside down stair right there facing backwards. 
On the other side, we have an upside down wool stair. Wool block in the center and another upside down stair facing backwards like so. Switch over to your top slabs and place two top slabs back from uh, each of those three blocks like so. And that will finish off layer one. For layer two here, come up to the front where we have these uh, two half slabs here, or the two top slabs that is, place uh, from this uh, last one here, place three solid blocks going forwards. One, two, and three. Just like this. Upside down stair facing forwards off to either side of that last one, or the back one that is. And then four blocks of wool back from each of those. One, two, three, and four. Just like this. Grab a stone button and place this on the second block of these four, off to either side. This is the uh, start of our pedo tubes right there. Upside down, or not an upside down, a top half uh, uh, slab off to either side of that last one there. Now switch over to your wool blocks again and place nine blocks going back from this upside, uh, keep tr trying to say upside down slab, that's a top slab. Nine blocks back from this top slab. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Like so. Stone button off to the uh, side. Now ten blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Stone button again. And one, two, and three uh, wool blocks, and three top slabs. Just like this. And we have the exact same thing on the other side. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wool blocks. Stone button off to the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stone button. One, two, three. Nope, three. And one, two, and three slabs. Like this. Switch over to your wool again. Fill in the uh, inside gap from those three uh, slabs there with your blocks of wool. Then four more going back from each. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. A upside down stair behind uh, both of those uh, blocks. Fill in this gap in the center with a block of wool. And an upside down stair going backwards from that as well. And a block going back, or not a block, an upside down <laughs> top slab. A top slab going back from each of those upside down stairs, just like that. And that will finish off uh, layer two. So, once we have that all in place, for layer three now, we're starting to uh, taper the nose back. So, on the second block of these uh, three wool blocks in the center here, or at the front, place a half slab right there on top of the second back. Block of wool behind it, slab out to either side and then four blocks of wool back from either of those slabs, or both of those slabs, that is. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. And a stone button on top of the second, right in line with this uh, last one that we placed for the pedo tubes. That will finish that off. Now a block out to either side of that last one. Switch over to your uh, blocks of quartz again. A full block of quartz right there, back from uh, both of those walls. This is the start of our forward entry and service doors. And going back from this, we have just a solid row of 25. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And an upside down stair afterwards to finish that off. Same thing on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. This should overhang by one block, in case I didn't mention that already. And an upside down stair afterwards. Fill in the gap here with uh, blocks of wool on each side. Then one more block going backwards. Grab your quartz block and place one behind both of those. This is the start of our aft doors here. Then we have three wool blocks going back here from both of these. One, two, and three. Grab your stone buttons, place one on the last block there, like so. And an upside down stair behind both of those. Block in the middle to fill up that gap again, and then uh, one more block and two top slabs. And that will do it for layer three.
for layer four here. Now we've got the uh, cockpit coming into view here. So for this, uh, grab your green stained glass. Now this might seem a bit uh, counterintuitive, but in the Aero Team pack, green stained glass is a glass texture with uh, lines on all sides, as opposed to uh, black stained glass here being fully transparent. We want the version with lines here for the uh, cockpit. Obviously, if you're in default, you don't want uh, just a green glass, so use black stained glass there instead. But uh, here in the Aero Team pack, we're using green stained glass. So for this now, uh, we have one there in the center after this uh, wool block from the last layer, uh, and actually a second wool block underneath it there, just uh, to patch that up. My bad. Um, yeah, so we have a wool block there filling up that uh, gap underneath. Now moving back from this uh, glass here, we have two going back on either side, like so. We can throw away that glass now, we won't be using it again. And a block of wool back from both of those two there. Grab your quartz stairs, place an upside down quartz stair on either side there, facing towards the center, just like so. And a quartz slab behind each, just like this. This is for your uh, L1 and R1 doors to finish that off. It's worth noting as well that if you're using the default texture pack with uh, quartz as the body of the aircraft, it's probably best to uh, accent the doors with a material such as cobblestone using uh, full blocks and your stairs and slabs and all that just like this. It looks a little bit wrong uh, next to the white, but it's a lot better than having no doors at all, so cobblestone is the best bet there. Sorry if I didn't mention that earlier, and you'll probably want to do the same thing for things such as the cargo door and all of that. But uh, de definitely not the gear doors, that's that would probably be a bit weird, but uh, yeah, now that we have that uh, out of the way, sorry about that, I uh, forgot to mention that earlier. But uh, moving back from these doors now, uh, grab your uh, upside down stairs, we're going to put in the windows. So back from this here, place an upside down stair back from this uh, slab, and we're going to make this a row of nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Same thing on the other side, 9 going back, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And a solid block behind both of those. The next row that we have is going to be uh, backwards facing uh, upside down stairs. So for this, we're going to actually come to the very back of this uh, row here on the fuselage. On top of this upside down stair here, we're going to place a temporary block on both of those. And then a 15 upside down stairs facing forwards this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, just like so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And you can knock out both of those uh, temporary blocks there. This is due to a uh, little skip in the spacing of the windows, as you can see here. So now that we've got that, uh, to finish off the back portion of the fuselage here. Uh, we're going to grab slabs and place a slab behind both of those uh, upside down stairs there. And then an upside down stair uh, facing forwards, inwards from both of those, just like this. Next, a block of wool back from both of those. Grab your quartz again and place a quartz full block on top of that and your stone buttons out to either side from the uh, quartz, just like so. Four blocks back now, one, two, three, and four on either side. And then come in one and four blocks again going back, one, two, three, and four. And that does it for layer four. So we just have now layer five to cap off the top of the fuselage. So for layer five now, come all the way to the front again here, and uh, between these three uh, glass blocks here, place a uh, half slab right there. Two blocks going back from that. On the uh, from this last block, we have a stair facing outwards and a slab, stair and slab, and now eight blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and box this off like we've always done. 
like this. Now grab your C lanterns and place these on the outermost two blocks of that with a block of wool on the center. This is for the start of the wing lights. Now we can start uh, boxing off the wing box here. So, from the C lantern here, place a stair out to either side facing forwards, just to finish off outlining that wing light right there. And now nine blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And bring this all the way across. Just like this. This will be the wing box on the top of the fuselage here. Once we have that, uh, place, let's see, from these center three blocks here, place 11 blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And bring this across. Once you have that, come back here to this uh, last block of the five across. And to finish off the wing box, place a stair facing backwards and a slab stair and slab, just like that. Now, from the center block of these three here, bring seven blocks back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stair facing backwards back from that, and right here we just have three slabs to fill in this gap. One, two, and three. Like so. And that will do it for layer five. Alright, so all we're doing for layer 6 basically here is starting off the uh, top of the wing and moving backwards to the base of the vertical stabilizer. The forward half of the fuselage is done. So, first thing we're going to do is grab your carpet, place three of those across here in line with this, uh, the sea lanterns here for the wing lights. I'll cover that up. Throw, you can uh, throw that away now for a second. Grab your stone buttons on the center block forwards from these three here. One stone button there, skip a block, and a second right there. This is for a little bit of detailing on the top of the fuselage as well. Next, you can grab your quartz slabs, and we're going to place five slabs going back here. One, two, three, four, and five. Grab your quartz stairs and place a quartz stair facing forwards right here for an airfoil extension and one last quartz slab there behind that one. Now bring uh, your quartz slabs all the way across here to make this a row of three. Grab your carpet again one last time, and one carpet on either side of that forwardmost uh, slab right there. And back from this, just bring your quartz slabs all the way across. This is the very top of the wing here. But that's it for that section. So now we have a... Uh, line running from the wings there all the way to the base of the vertical stabilizer. So with your quartz slabs, back from this slab here, place an additional 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Right there. And then 9 uh, blocks with your wool going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. That should line up right there. And that's going to be the start of our vertical stabilizer. So, for the vertical stabilizer here, the first thing we're going to do is skip two of these uh, blocks here and place seven going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should be right in line there. Now skip one and we've got another seven blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should overhang by one. Skip one here and six blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now grab your slab, place uh, one slab on top of that first block, not skipping any blocks there. Uh, five blocks going back. One, two, three, four, and five, and a top slab afterwards. Slab on top, and five blocks. One, two, three, four, five. And to finish off the vertical stabilizer here, a slab on top of this forwardmost wool block there, and four blocks going back. One, two, three, and four. That is the vertical stabilizer in its entirety. The only thing we're going to do here now is grab a lever and place a lever facing backwards here. Make sure it's flipped uh, backwards on the very front of the, uh, on the top of the frontmost block there, exposed. So, your vertical stabilizer should look like that. You can uh, pause and have a look if you need as well. And now we are going to move on to the horizontal stabilizers. So, for this here, grab your... 
uh, let's see, stone slabs and quartz slabs here. What we're going to do is just outline the layers and fill them in. So on the second block of the uh, four here that we have on top, on the lower half, we're going to place three uh, quartz slabs like this. Actually, two going back, one and two, and a third out to the side, just like that. And then going down a layer here, uh, on the top half of this uh, wool block right there, place a stone slab right there, stone top slab that is. Two stone top slabs out to the side at a diagonal angle, two more at an angle, and one out like so. Grab your quartz slabs again and place three going towards the center, one, two, and three. And then blocks in diagonally just to fill in this, or just one towards the <laughs> diagonally towards the center. Now, where you see all of these little empty areas uh, along the horizontal stabilizer here, you're just going to fill that all in with your quartz slabs. And the horizontal stabilizer should look like that. This area here on the underside stays empty. So we can do the same thing on the other side here. Uh, second block back, one and two back, one out to the side. Down here, one uh, stone top slab, two out to the side, two out to the side, and one back. Three quart slabs across, one in diagonally, and fill in everything. And that is it for your horizontal stabilizers. So now we can move on to the wings. For the wing here, how this is going to work is we're going to make a general outline here and then uh, create the layers and fill it all in. If you've uh, followed any of our other tutorials in the past, this should be a piece of cake. There's really not a whole lot to it. So grab your stone slabs here out from this uh, forward most of the uh, row here out to the side. Place a stone slab there. Stone slab below it and one out to the side just like this to start off the base of the wing. Next we have two stone slabs out to the side at an angle. Two more out to the side. And one down at a at a uh, angle there in line with those two. Now we have a light on the wing. So for this, grab a torch. Now this does use a bit of uh, world edit trickery. So uh, and in addition to that, the torch is a custom model in the Aero Team Pack too. As you can see, it's this little uh, lamp model here. Uh, this is very useful for lighting uh, elements such as this. So if you have access to the uh, to World Edit and to the Aero Team Pack, what you're going to do is grab a stick, place down a torch just like this, and with your stick, type the command slash REPL0. This will switch it over to the Replace tool. Just select that torch there, and <laughs> you saw nothing. Select that torch there. You can knock that out now, and just replace that wool block with the torch like so. Uh, if you don't have access to World Edit or the or even if you do have access to WorldEdit and you're using just a normal default torch, it'll probably look a little funny, and you don't have to put this in. It's just an uh, extra detail. But if you do have access to WorldEdit and the Aeroteam pack, then I highly recommend do, uh, that you do put that in. Now moving back from here, from this uh, bottom half slab here, place, uh, let's see, two out on an angle now, then two more diagonally, now one back at an angle. Going down from this one now, we've got uh, two top slabs in line with that one that we placed there, and then two out at an angle like so. That is it for the leading edge of the wing though. That's everything. So grab your quartz slabs now, place two back from that uh, outermost layer there. Make this a row of five in towards the center, two, three, four, and five. Now up at an angle diagonally here, so up half a level and in one. This is going to be a row of six uh, half slabs. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now come in one at an angle there, in the same uh, level. And let me see what we're doing here. Come up a level again, right here. Oops. Didn't mean to knock that one out. So in line with this, you're up a level right here, and you've got one, two, three, and four uh, 
top half slabs across right there, and that should join up right with this uh, second wall block forwards right there. And that is the outline of the wing done. So, now what we're going to do is just uh, work our way down with uh, the layering outlines. So, for our first layer, come up here to this uh, stone slab right here at the very front. Place a, uh, with the quartz slab, place a quartz slab back at an angle again, right here. Add on an angle again, and two back. Then two in towards the center at an angle. That should connect up right there. Going down for our next layer right here from these uh, two stone slabs adjacent to the uh, wing light here. Let's see, you'll place uh, two quartz slabs back at an angle right there, and then two at an angle towards the center. And lastly, just come up here to this one uh, half slab right there and just a quartz slab back from it. That was pretty easy. So, now what we're going to do is just do the same thing that we did with the horizontal stabilizer, and wherever you see an empty gap in, this, in these outlined layers now, you'll just fill that in with quartz slabs. If you're confused, you can just... Uh, Watch as I fill it in. So we have this top outline here, that all just gets filled in. Now we have this next outline here, that all gets filled in too. Just like so. And now this next layer gets filled in. Pretty simple. So, once you have that all done, you just have this last layer here. And that is it for the top half of the wing. So... Next, we will be working on filling in the underside, because obviously it's uh, still not too great down here. So we've got the um, just bits to smooth out for the wing layering on the underside, and then we will uh, add in the flap track fairings and engine pylons and all that jazz. So, uh, let's start at the uh, very outmost layer of the wing here and just work our way inwards. So where you have this layer right here, just place a slab right there. Uh, forwards to finish off that layer, and then uh, from these last two here, one, two, and three uh, half slabs back to fill in that uh, flap track fairing there. That's what we're going to do. This is an interesting little flap track fairing attached to the engine pylon. So, leaving a gap of three blocks here, place a quartz full block right there with a top slab behind it. Once you have that, you're going to bring this uh, two blocks forward now, one and two, like so. A half slab forward from that, or a top slab that is, and then four blocks going forwards, full blocks with your quartz, one, two, three, and four, to start off the engine pylon there. And then to finish off this layer of the wing here, the layering here from this uh, stone slab sticking out right there with the wing light on it there, uh, grab your quartz and place two back at an angle right there, and then one more to join up with that the uh, the edge of that layer right there, and then fill all these spots in as we've always done. For our next uh, flap track fairing and engine pylon, out from this uh, block that we just placed here from that last layer, place a quartz uh, top slab or a half slab in there and a top slab to form a kind of quasi quartz block and a half slab out from that right there. We're going to make this a row of four going forwards. So we have one here, two, three, and four with your uh, half slabs underneath and the top slabs there. Then from these top slabs here, place uh, four blocks going forwards from this now. One, two, three, and four. Should stick out one past that uh, last pylon there. And we're just going to fill in that quartz block right there with your uh, quartz half slab. That's it for the uh, engine pylons and uh, flat track fairings and all that jazz. So now we can just uh, fill in the underside of this layer. We don't uh, have any more outlining to do here. This is the outline. So just fill in all of that layer there with your quartz uh, top slabs. And the wing is done. So, once you have that all built now, all you have left to do is mirror this uh, wing onto the other side of the aircraft, and we can get going on our engines. 
All right, here we have the wing mirrored over to the other side. Uh, in case you were confused at all, this is what it should look like mirrored onto the other side of the aircraft. And with that all out of the way, we can now get going on uh, building our Honeywell LF507 engines on these uh, pylons that we've built here now. So let's just uh, start with this uh, outboard pylon here. So for this, what we're going to do is grab our uh, black wool on this uh, down from the uh, front block of the four on the uh, four quartz blocks on the pylon here. Place a black wool there with a stone button on its face for the uh, fan with a wool block behind it, like so. Underneath this, we're going to place our two uh, wool top slabs right there. And uh, with that, now grab your stone slabs and place a stone slab or stone top slab out from that, and a stone half slab up there. Now this is going to be a bit tricky going from here, because in the aero team pack we have these vertical slabs, which we use for our uh, two wide engine cowlings here. So for this, if you are using the aero team pack, just grab your dead brain coral fan and your dead tube coral fan. With the... Uh, well, these make... Um, well, the brain coral fan makes a uh, vertical wool top slab, and the tube coral fan makes a vertical stone top slab. And we can use this for our engine cowlings. So, uh, place down two uh, dead brain coral fans on either side of those two wool blocks, like that. Now I've got a bit of world edit trickery to do here. So, if you've uh, seen our other tutorials, you'll know exactly what you're doing here. Uh, just place two temporary blocks forwards from those uh, two uh, rows of vertical slabs there. Place a dead tube coral fan out to either side, and now we've got a little bit of replace magic to do. So grab a stick, type slash ripple zero, switch this over to the replace tool. Select that uh, vertical slab there, you can knock that out now, and replace the temporary block with that vertical slab. Same thing over here on the other side, select that and replace the vertical slab. Once you've done that, now we just have the back of the engine cowling to do now, so if you can throw those two away. Grab your uh, cobblestone wall and birch trapdoor. Back from this wool block here, you're going to place two cobblestone walls going back. Then with your birch trapdoor, just a single trapdoor underneath that uh, first cobblestone wall, and then two out to either side flicked down to finish tapering off the engine cowling, like so. It should all look like this once you have it all built. Um, again, if you're using the default pack or don't have access to world edit for that replace uh, trick, uh, this will be a bit difficult. Um, I suppose you could try to use uh, something like iron trapdoors around the sides, um, uh, powered downwards to taper that off, but it'll look very thin and a bit wrong from the front. Another thing you could do is uh, make something like an offset 2x2 engine with your uh, stairs. So like you have your cobblestone stairs here and you make a 2x2 uh, two two run like this and then bring it back like so. Or whatever, you can um, build something like that off similar to the engine right here and have it offset at an angle outwards. So the pylon would be here, for instance. But again, this is uh, kind of wrong and not correct. So um, since we do have the aero team pack here, we like to use this in instead of that uh, trick. So we don't actually have a uh, solid 2x2 two two engine designed like that. But uh, yeah, I'm sure you should be able to uh, whip up something if you really need to without the aero team pack. Anyways. Uh, that is our first engine. I suppose I can just uh, do this a second time in case you need to uh, see it again. So, you've got your uh, wool block there on the second block, black wool there, stone button forwards from that, two slabs underneath, stone top slab there, and a half slab. Grab your vertical slabs, two uh, wool vertical slabs there along either side, temporary block, and your... Uh, vertical stone slabs for the engine cowling there, and your uh, cobblestone walls back for the exhaust fan, or the exhaust cone, and the two or three um, birch trapdoors, just like so. 
it's as easy as that. Really not a whole lot to it. It's uh, not a large engine by any means. So now all you have left to do is to build the same thing over on the other side of the build on the other two engine pylons. And that is it. Once you have your four Honeywell engines in place, that is basically everything for the exterior. Uh, if you're looking to add the landing gear as well, as I said, we're going to be doing that at the very end of the tutorial. First, though, we have the interior to build, so let's uh, jump straight into that. Just uh, hop into the aircraft here. Obviously, there's not a whole lot going on at the minute, so let's change that. First thing we're going to do here is grab your sea lanterns, uh, black wool, black carpet as well, and gray wool too. All that good stuff. And where we have your forward uh, service or forward entry door here on the left, uh, underneath this quartz block here, place a sea lantern right there for lighting with a black carpet on top. This is going to be the start of your uh, aisles. Then a black wool in the center and a sea lantern off to the side again and a black carpet there. We can focus on bringing this back later, but for now what we're going to do is uh, come up here to the front and place uh, three gray wool going forwards here for the flight deck. Next we have our... Um, Actually, we should put in the instrument panels first. So grab your cobblestone stairs, place a cobblestone stair in front of that uh, wool block right there, and a nether brick uh, slab on top for the MCP. So what we're going to do for throttle quadrant now, uh, if you've seen our uh, any of our other tutorials, you'll kind of know what we're doing here with the throttle quadrant model, but uh, actually we're going to be doing something a little bit different this time around, uh, because we have the banner for the uh, seats here. So, place down a temporary block right there in front of that uh, wall, or that uh, cobblestone stair. And in, instead of um, placing down the throttle quadrant immediately and uh, locking it in its on state, we're actually going to um, place down a uh, temporary block here, and then grab a light gray banner and place that on the uh, back face right here. This is again for the... Um, kind of for the pilot and uh, co-pilot seats, just to get a little bit of a uh, representation there of that. And then uh, what we're going to do is um, grab a redstone repeater, and this is our um, throttle quadrant model. So um, obviously it's not a whole lot right now, that's a custom model for railways. So we're going to grab a torch or any other uh, method of powering this, place that behind like so. What is the deal here? Oh, there's a lever underneath. <laughs> yeah, so um, just place that anywhere. Anyways, uh, now that you have your uh, uh, repeater locked in this on state here, we're going to select this with our replace tool. You can knock all of that out. And we're going to replace that temporary block there with the uh, custom model for the throttle quadrant there. And you can throw that torch away now. And that is it for the flight deck. If you are in default, something as simple as a redstone comparator would work for the throttle quadrant. Um, it gets the point across and is a uh, fairly nice model. In fact, we actually used the comparator before. We had the uh, custom model for the aero team pack, I believe. But this is, if you do have access to the aero team pack, this is a lot nicer than a comparator, so I would highly recommend that. That is it for the flight deck, though. So next we can grab a door and put that in. Uh, we're going to be using the um, jungle door here um, and place this down facing backwards right there on top of that black wall. If you are in default, a jungle door will look a bit weird, and I would recommend using a birch door instead. But this door, uh, or custom texture for this door, represents the uh, cabin door much more nicely. So we can throw that away now. Next, what we have going on here... Uh, to start with, we can start with uh, taking our uh, aisle all the way down and just filling in the flooring, actually. So, uh, place gray wool going all the way down the edges here until you hit the wool there. And what we're going to do now is grab our sea lanterns and place this going all the way back down here for the uh, aisle lighting and to keep the plane nice and bright. And just place black carpet along the top of that, like so, all the way up to the front. You can just keep it in line with this gray wool here. We'll worry about the uh, back of the fuselage later. Or back of the uh, interior. So we can uh, 
throw that away now. Next we've got a uh, bit of interesting stuff going along the top here. So this center row here is actually going to be top slabs uh, instead of a full block. So um, if you have uh, world edit, it's a lot easier to just grab that and replace it going all the way along. And the top slabs here help keep the uh, interior nice and spacious. Um, and just bring this all the way back here. Um, again, if you don't have access to world edit, just replacing it should be fine. But make sure that if you do do that, that you replace the uh, carpet and two buttons here that we had along the top. You don't want to accidentally uh, knock out those details. Anyways, once we have that, again, we can work about worry about the... Uh, after the interior uh, later, but uh, that's all good for now. So we can throw that away. Next, we've got the forward galleys and uh, the bulkhead up here. So where we have these doors, just place a uh, cobblestone uh, upside down stair facing forwards, right at an angle right in here. And then a second upside down stair facing forwards on top of both of those. That will finish off the forward galleys and the uh, bulkheads here. So now we can worry about the seating, because that's all there is left. So for this, grab your red sandstone stairs and uh, slabs. In the Aerotame pack, this is a uh, blue color which we like to use for our standard seating, but uh, if you're in the default pack, you can use something like uh, stone brick stairs and slabs. Anyways, so you have your uh, red sandstone stair one block back from the bulkhead there, and with a uh, red sandstone slab on top. And that is basically it for the seating. So just take this all the way back here. We don't have any uh, overwing exits or anything to worry about. So you'll literally take this all the way up here to this next upside down stair that we have back here in the fuselage. And same thing on the other side. Just all the way back like so. And then your slabs on top of the seats. This isn't uh, anywhere near as complicated as like a uh, 777 interior or anything. Just uh, short and sweet. Pretty nice. So once you have the uh, seating in here, we just have the uh, back to fill in. So throw away the uh, stairs there. Grab your, um, let's see, gray carpet now. And to fill in the... Um, blocks here in between on these two wool here. Just place a gray carpet on top there. And then, um, yeah, to fill it for the uh, gray wool there, just to take the flooring all the way back. Next, take your uh, sea lanterns and take this all the way back to the wool as far as it will go there with your black carpet on top. And lastly, let's see, we just have the um, aft galley here. So for this we have yet another custom model, which is the, um, let's see if I can remember it, I think it's the turtle egg. Yeah, here we go. So we use the turtle egg model for the, um, uh, as a galley. You can uh, rotate this around by placing more depending on the orientation uh, that you've built this plane in. So just the more turtle eggs you add, the more it'll rotate around. For us, it's just one turtle egg to keep it uh, lined up like so. Again, this is one block back from our aft doors here. That's our only use for this model, though, so you can throw it away. And the gray carpet, too. Next, grab a block of andesite and place that behind the turtle egg right there to fill that in. And then we just have to uh, fill in the rest of the... Uh, uh, back here. So grab your stairs, place an upside down stair on top of the uh, galley right there. And now we can bring these top slabs back once more. So just knock these out all the way until you're one away from the uh, uh, stair right there. So you should have a, the andesite, stair one block forwards, full block right there, and then your top slabs are going all the way to the front of the aircraft right here in line with these uh, exit doors. And actually one more adjustment I'd like to make. Uh, this is actually a quartz upside down stair here, not a wall stair. So just replace that with a quartz upside down stair like so. And that is actually everything for the interior. So there's uh, not a whole lot to it. So you can just hop out of the aircraft now. 
And that's everything, so now we can move on to the landing gear. For the landing gear here, we're just going to start up at the uh, with the nose landing gear first, where we have these uh, pitot tubes in line with the uh, second block of the cockpit glass. Just come right down here. You should have these three wool here. Knock out the center block of wool. And we can also knock out this top slab here to access everything. And what you're going to want to do as well here is, I believe this doesn't have anything underneath it. Yeah, it's just the uh, stair there. You can actually knock out this block of uh, wool there from the uh, interior and place down a cobblestone full block there to uh, blend everything in and just cap off the uh, gear well. Grab your cobblestone wall now, place a cobblestone wall down from that with a, uh, I believe this is a black wool underneath with your stone buttons out to either side to finish off the uh, nose gear. And just replace that top slab that you uh, removed there to access everything. And that's it for the nose gear, actually. So, moving on back, now we have the um, man landed gear to put in. So for this here, where you see these two blocks of quartz here, knock these out. You're also going to knock a second row out towards the center. So you should have just this uh, middle row of the uh, birch trapdoors left there. Next, what we're going to do is grab, uh, let's see, trapdoors, your spruce trapdoor, if you're using the arrow team pack, place two of those across the top there to kind of uh, fill in the uh, wheel well. Uh, if you're not using uh, the arrow team pack and you're in default, um, you can just leave that empty or place cobblestone uh, top slabs or really anything you like doesn't matter, just kind of um, makes the um, wheel well more refined so you don't have the gray wool showing from the uh, interior. Next though, we have our uh, uh, large wheels for the main landing gear. So out one row from the fuselage here, place a 2x2 two two with your nether brick upside down stairs, uh, like so, right here. So this should line up right in there. Again, this is one out from the fuselage. Then what you're going to do is, uh, let's see, you can throw that away for now, place two cobblestone top slabs in one from the uh, uh, bottom two right there, grab, a, uh, grab an anvil, and let me check the orientation on this. This is going to be, um, yeah, so just facing sideways, so uh, from this uh, upside down, or not upside down, from the stair here, the top forward one on the uh, gear, place an anvil there, uh, just facing uh, sideways for the um, uh, gear strut. You can throw that anvil away now, and now we just have the uh, gear doors to uh, place now, so grab your quartz slab in your quartz stairs, place two quartz half slabs on top of the uh, wheel there, and then a placeholder block there, and then two upside down stairs out to the side right there. And that is the uh, gear door that would uh, fold down to cover up the landing gear when it's retracted. And uh, obviously when the gear is extended, the uh, gear door is out to the side. And that is it for the uh, main landing gear. Not a whole lot to it, I can do it on the other side as well here. So where we have the gear door, just knock all that out there and a second row towards the center. Your spruce top slabs, or spruce uh, trapdoor in there to finish off the uh, wheel well. Stairs here to form up the wheel. Cobblestone slabs, or top slabs towards the center there with an anvil on top, facing towards the center. And then your quartz top slabs, or half slabs on top, and upside down stairs facing towards the center out to the side. And that's it for the landing gear. So that is actually it. If you are building the uh, aircraft just on the ground without the uh, air brakes or anything, this is uh, everything for the RJ100. You have now finished it. And you can uh, just skip right on to the end of the video. If you are building the uh, air brakes though, for um, again this would be if the aircraft has just landed on the runway or something, or you're just building the air brakes for fun, I'll be showing you how to do that next. 
All right, so for the air brakes here, there's uh, not a whole lot to it. We'll come to the uh, end of the fuselage right here, where we have these last two rows down here. From this stair here, wh what we're going to do is basically just move these rows outwards. So we have that out two blocks to either side. You can knock out that stair now, and a full block underneath, like so. Knock that row out too. And then ju this one just goes one out. So two down there and a top slab, and you can knock that all out there. And those are the, the uh, air brake panels skewed out to the side. One other thing you can do if you do have world edit is um, place a stair facing outwards back from that. Grab a stick and slash repl zero to replace that with air. This just kind of helps to uh, taper off the um, uh, panels a little bit more than just having it uh, be a straight sharp angle. But that's it. So next we have the uh, sports structure, or the interior structure, right here. So the first thing we're going to do is um, grab a granite, I believe it is, a polished granite right here. Interestingly enough, when you actually look at the air brakes, there's this interesting um, kind of uh, striped um, texture on the uh, rear of the fuselage right there. I'm not sure how to describe it really, but... Uh, we actually have a block in the Aero Team pack that is essentially the exact same thing. So just place a polished granite right there in between those two blocks of wool, and that will finish that off. You can uh, throw that away now. Grab a cobblestone slab and place a cobblestone slab on top, and a top slab coming back from that there. This is just the little uh, support structure coming back on the inside, on the interior for the uh, navigation lights at the very rear of the fuselage. Speaking of navigation lights, all you'll do for that is grab a torch and place that right on top of the cobblestone top slab right there. And that is it for the air brakes. And once you have all of that built, that is everything for the Avro RJ100. So congratulations on completing this aircraft. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it in your Minecraft world. Thank you so much for choosing an Aeroteam design. Hundreds of hours of work from all of us here at the Aeroteam go into all of our aircraft to make these designs possible. And on that note, we do ask that if you use our designs, then please do give us credit for our hard work. If you're building this on a server, or if you're building an airport project, or something you intend to publish or share in any way, you must give credit to the Aeroteam for these designs. This can be accomplished as easily as a sign anywhere around the aircraft saying, designed by the Aero Team. If you share this anywhere on social media, which you should definitely feel free to, by the way, just give us credit. That's all that we ask. And if you have built this aircraft, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. So, with that all out of the way, that concludes this tutorial. Again, thank you so much for building this aircraft. If you enjoyed, you can check out our other tutorials via the playlists in the description below. If you like this, you might find something else from us that you like too. And if you do find that to be the case, then please do consider subscribing to the Aeroteam channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. That's just about it though, so thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one.